Okay, so I'm making this video to document some touring stuff for a cross country bike ride that I'm going to be taking um, across the U.S. in late May. Um, mostly for the sake of enjoying it, but also for the sake of um, trying to bring climate change issues awareness. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. But um, for this, I'm going to talk about the equipment I'm carrying because I feel like there's not a lot of sources out there that actually talk about this. I say it's mostly because the touring community is generally, you know, people that have a lot of extra time to be able to do it, like retired people and senior citizens. And so they're not, they do make great journals on crazy guy on a bike, but um, there's not a lot of YouTube stuff that people have out there. So I'm going to walk through what I've got and everything and why a bit, and that should all help to um, explain things to people. And I can't. And so, this is my right-handed pannier, right pannier bag, or lead uh, bike packer. It's relatively new to me. I've got the bike roller for a long time before now, and I'm still getting used to these ones. They've got a cinch top, and the lid closes over like this, so I sort of have to work it over and I'll get it in there. But what I've, I'm just going to sort of roll through everything I've gotten here. And what I've gotten here is generally stuff that you don't need to have easily accessible on the fly because when you get off the bike, you get, mo I most of the time, get off on the left hand side. And so reaching over to the right hand side and the far side is harder. And this being the right handed pannier bag means that I don't need to get into it as much. And so the less frequently I can go in there. First, water bag because there's certain places where you're just going to have to go for a long time without getting access to water. This is um, 96 ounces Nalgene Canteen. <coughs> I'm thinking about getting a larger one, or maybe up to the 10 liter kind of size. Um, I'm not sure of exact sizing yet, because you just have to figure out what you're willing to carry and what you're willing to buy. This is a REI Stratus um, sleeping pad which I have a hole in it I discovered, and I need to find where that is, which I'll do by sticking in a bathtub with air in it until I find the air holes. This I've been very pleased with. Um, Montbell uh, Ultra Super Light Spiral Down Hugger Number 3, which this thing is a full-size sleeping bag. It's rated to 30 degrees, and it is very comfortable and very nice, and it stretches with you and it's worth the price and packs down into a small football shape so it saves you a lot of space and then I've got these are my off bike clothes essentially um, ultralight nylon pants that are just weight ounces that uh, I believe they're Columbia travel pants ultralight uh, nylon underwear uh, wicking underwear this is um, a Shema because it's just versatile and you can do a lot with it. Um, it's sort of like a last ditch garment for keeping, keeping from freezing. <clears throat> and this one garment I have to pull out from over here because I was wearing it today. This is a uh, warm, warm layer, gear, like Under Armour loose fit heat gear that is nice because I can wear it for off bike or just lounging around in the tent, but I can also pair it up with my base layer that I'll talk about later um, to help keep me warm without having to have something extra super thick and heavy. Versatility and usability on multiple areas is very handy. Also, packing cubes are very nice for being able to keep track of what you've got and keep it organized and keep it packed small and light. So, next, this is toiletries bag. Um, just going to go over a couple of things that are in here. Uh, Shamwell butter, sunscreen, uh, antibiotic vitamins, medicines, like things like painkillers, or if you've got diet, like uh, GI issues, likely. Um, pretty much the medicines that you think you're likely going to have to need. Um, I have Tums in here as well. Um, liquid bandage, band-aids. Also, sewing kit, which is helpful. I've already s stitched up stuff once before. This little ace self-adhering bandage, so you don't need um sticky. You, you don't need um 
metal ties in order to hold everything together. Which, during my last bike trip, I used multiple times because I tweaked my legs a couple times, and so you wrap it up and just help it get through, and it's fun. And this bag that it's held, everything's held in is um, Coughlin's um, lightweight bags, which Coughlin's makes a lot of outdoor equipment, and they work quite nicely. They're simple, but they work work well. This is um, essentially a little outdoor emergency slash fire starting kit. Um, here, emergency signal mirror, compass, uh, mat, uh, fire steel, emergency blanket, and a uh, one liter water bag. And once again, five and small bags. They come in kits that are a variety of sizes, so you end up making kits that are a variety of sizes. And there it comes and goes that. You end up making kits that are a variety of sizes just because of the size and the volume of working out. This is a purchase I made this winter, which I have been very pleased with. Um, it's a REI Novara, I don't remember the model, but it's essentially their, their heavy model um, rain jacket. I think it might be more of their winter model that they keep out there. But you can hear from the sound of it that it's solid material. Essentially, this paired up with insulation layers makes it a winter coat against um, against cold temperatures and high winds. It's got this nice little flap that you can extend here that covers up your backside while you're pedaling. But when you're around town or when you're not worrying much, as much about spray, you can just cinch it up right, like that. It also has um, armpit vents, which I always keep down unless it's very cold, in which case, then they come up. The, the hood is extra, but it it's really nice when you actually need it. And it is specifically set up for bicycles. Um, and there's a little uh, pocket up here for your MP3 player and a routing spot for sticking the wires to it. And I need to find something a little bit smaller than this to get into take some space. But that's what I did this weekend while on a trip to uh, do more dry running of stuff. This is just what the uh, inside of the bike packer looks like when empty. Some works out very well on its arrangement of that. And so that's one bag. Now for the one that I have on my left side, and so it's more accessible to me. So, uncinch. book that I've been reading that I didn't get a chance to read yesterday while on the trip, but, uh, while practicing, but it's a nice book, Bicycling Coast to Coast, um, author Donna Lynn Eikenberry's description of everything she, uh, did on her trip and a lot of good descriptions of where to go, what to do, um, how many hills, how bad it is, things like that. Uh, this is a Sea to Summit dry bag, but, you know, dry bag works for this. I like it for being my food bag. And for food, what ends up being the thing to deal with is how do you save weight? Well, how do you get the most amount of food for the weight that you're carrying? And I do that with myself by going calorie dense and moisture light. Um, because it was only an overnight trip, I carried an apple. An apple with me, I had an orange yesterday. But generally, you don't want things that have moisture. You want to go dried fruit, dried stuff. These are both calorie dense. Like these will last you days, um, even if you're subsisting entirely on them. And these are some dried wasabi peas because they just have a nice flavor. And this is some muesli, which I hadn't taken on an overnight before. And this actually works well, just pouring straight into your mouth for and treating it sort of like granola and having some at a time. And for carbohydrate bread type product, um, wraps and um, pitas are better than bread. I'm a big bread fan, but it just takes up so much space in the bag and it's hard to, uh, it's, it's hard to keep it from just being destroyed. And so those kinds of things give you the same amount of calories without being as much uh, space. And okay, so 
just discovered that apparently the camera kicks off after like eight minutes of filming time. So we're gonna get to the rest of this quicker. So this is my insulation liner bag, which when paired up with the REI, I think it's called Stratus, or something like that, jacket works very well. These are liner gloves, these are um, shell gloves that I use with my liner gloves. I've got thin little liner gloves, which are over on my over on the table, but they're just, you know, what they give out at running, running events and stuff like that. They're, they're thin, they're not really insulated, they're just a shell that adds a little bit more resistance, and, uh, wind resistance, a little bit more insulation value to everything else by being wind and water resistant. So that's what those are. This is my REI uh, Rubble Cloud jacket, which is very, very lightweight. And I also very much have come to appreciate because I wear it in my tent before I get out and into the cold air and while I'm de deconstructing camp. And it's light and comfortable and it's a little big for me, but it means I can pretty much layer it over everything else I own and it's going to keep me warm. Which, if it gets down to the 30s out in Nevada and um, the deserts while I'm out there, it's going to be very handy. This is... Um, what I use just constantly, which is my uh, Patagonia Nano Puff vest. Um, also, Rebel Cloud has a um, little uh, MP3 pocket right here in the front as well, which is very, very common now. And so this is a Patagonia Nano Puff. I wear it a lot. It works really great paired up with the base layer and that might be a cat that you see in the corner. Spooky. Um, works very well with uh, base layers because this protects your core, keeps it warm, while the base layer keeps your arms warm enough to not be really irritated. I'm sort of a wuss for my arms being cold, but it's, it's something to get used to over time. And these pack up very tightly. One thing I've been curious of myself is if you leave them packed up small into their little foldable self-contained pockets, does that damage the insulation like uh, sleeping bags do, like it does for sleeping bags? If anybody who's smart and knows that answer definitively, um, I'd appreciate that. I've assumed that it's the case, and so I don't like to pack them tight. Um, but if anybody knows definitively, that'd be good. Another Coglin bag for organizing. Works great. And this is the last bag in the uh, pannier. And this is my on-bike general purpose clothing. Jersey, bicycle jersey, fairly standard. These are arm covers, UV protective, which I, they're also supposed to cool, but that's not the really important thing to me. What's great about these is I don't have to apply sunscreen repeatedly every day in order to keep myself protected. I don't have to carry that extra weight in sunscreen. I don't have to do any of that nonsense. I don't have to worry about the dirt catching in it. I just put these on and boom, it's done. I take them off at the end of the day and all the road grime and everything comes off. Um, this is something new for me. Um, like a cycling beanie, I suppose. Um, I am going to be appreciative of this, like in hotter weather, so that my scalp doesn't get burned through my helmet. And also because it's going to be good because when you're riding for a while and you ride through bug swarms or around them, you'll start having this paranoia that you're, you've got something in your hair constantly, like just brushing on your scalp. Second bike jersey. Um, bike shorts. Normally that other bike jersey would be not in the bag because I'd have worn it. But I didn't end up needing to today because it was too cold to de-layer down the jerseys. These are uh, rain pants I got very nicely from my father-in-law, which I greatly appreciate. Um, because they're wind resistant, water resistant, and it means that my leg warmers, which I wore today and so they're not in the bag right now, I'll show you those in a second. Um, get a lot more use. I can go down to... I haven't tested the lower limits of the temperatures on it yet, but it definitely adds a lot of versatility. These are my Ibex leg warmers, which they're pricey, but they do last. And they're made of wool, um, merino wool, I believe. They've got grippers at the bottom, uh, zippers for getting on and off easier. The trick I found with these as far as comfort on the inside, because these grip the inside of your legs, um, don't pull them fully tight. Like, don't get it up as far as you can um, on your legs. 
because then they just start to chafe and start to hurt over time. But if you leave them just a little bit loose and there's a little bit of slack in them, then they're more comfortable. And you can wear them all day and it's not too bad under, under bike shorts. Extra pair of socks. I would normally have more in there, but I wore some of them today. I generally, I think I'm going to go with um, like two pairs of Injinji like toe socks, thin ones. Um, two layer, two sets of uh, like ankle length sock, like, um, like mid thigh socks, like that. And um, like a th single thick like wool, smart wool sock. This is um, going to be my camp towel. I've already had to test it a couple times just drying off different things. Um, you know, Coglin ultralight towel. They're nice. And this is another Eagle Creek um, packing cube, which I like. And this is um, a Patagonia Mer Merino 2 um, base layer, which I wore today, and so that's why it's out. And this I very much liked. It's not quite as... Um, it's not quite as uh, thick as the Baba one I've had from, I forget the company name, but I feel like that's going to last longer. The Baba one had problems. Well, it has started having holes. It's after a couple of years, so it's understandable. I don't fault it. I'm not like upset at the product. Um, but, you know, you, you, I like to buy stuff to last for a long time. And this is the inside of this pan bag. Out of the way. This is my... REI Quarter Dome T1 single person tent. It's tight in there, but, and it, you want to practice setting this up because the, the setup for it requires you to actually use guy lines in order to really get the feel for how everything really sets up. Um, this is my Ortlieb uh, reflective series waterproof pedal bag. I got this one recently because I'd had a different one prior that water would end up getting in during heavy rainstorms and it, that's just obnoxious. Um, this is something I'm experimenting with. Um, it's a wire tie that my handlebars flop to the side whenever I stop someplace, which is just irritating as I'll get out. And so I'm hoping to find a way to get around that issue. Uh, dried cranberries that I was noshing on last night. I just put them in my handlebar bag because it's easy. Um, these would normally go into my my health bag, but earplugs are very nice because there's just going to be some places where there's snoring people, and that's not their fault that they snore, but it makes it really hard for for you to fall asleep. Um, this is my my um, bike multi tool, which I've gotten a lot of use out of. I need to do some cleaning on it because some junk in the bag has gotten onto it, but. Um, it's got a chain breaker and multiple wrenches. I, yeah, they, I definitely know they still make this one. Um, and this is all just crud that got into my handlebar bag that I had to dump some stuff out the other day that got all over everything. Um, this is some stuff that I carry with me all the time that I just don't, haven't depacked from this little carrying case. But Leatherman, a Spork, bits for the Leatherman tweezers um, lighter other bit kits which together give me a lot of versatility on stuff I can do and a pen and notepad because that's going to be useful stuff and a pocket knife I'm probably going to take something more along the lines of like a larger fixed blade knife just for um, dealing with with crafting types of issues um, a nog, blinder, bike light. I recommend not putting these on your seat post. Find a different place to put it onto your rack because I've had to fix this in order to keep it from falling off um, because my legs rub against my seat post enough that it caused wear in that over time. And this is my handlebar bag. This is the uh, pocket where you can keep some good and, uh, important items. Key key lanyard and it slots over very nicely and just locks on with magnetic locks and two small mesh pockets on the sides that work well and this nice carrying strap which I appreciate. Um, it would be nice if, there, if the coming on and off mechanism was a little bit easier but okay part three.
And this is what's letting me go across without having to worry about power and all that kind of stuff, which is my goal zero 10, I believe is the, the exact name, goal zero 10 um, solar charging kit, which is very, very nice. And cat with string, which is very, very nice. And um, I love this because you can charge while using items with this. So essentially, the solar power, the solar panels on the front there, plug into this, which is a um, recharging battery pack, just rechargeable batteries. Um, Goal Zero gives you ones, but essentially any nickel metal hydride will work, is what their website says. And then from there, you plug into, plug in whatever device that's USB compatible into here to plug in your things like cell phone and and that's it starting to charge you can see that's got a lot of juice in there because it's green and it'll go through orange and red to red I believe um, to each to in its charging process but what's nice is when you're charging you the panel pow as far as I can tell sends juice to the pa battery pack faster than you can draw off the battery pack and so you can be charging your cell phone or keeping it topped off all day in the middle of nowhere where it's roaming for signal. And this is still going to have juice for something like your MP3 player at night, which is also something that I have very much become appreciative of because without some kind of music, something to keep your mind going, it just becomes monotonous and really, really hard to keep going. But the uh, this whole little kit comes with... <coughs> this nice little pouch that you can just sort of put everything into so in charging this I can put it in there and then just zip everybody up and what I do is I actually strap it onto the outside of my panniers like this with a good chunk of it pointing up towards the sky and chunk of it pointing uh, mostly towards the sky but also towards um, the south because I'll put this on my left hand pannier when I'm going westward and I strap it on with this cordage and I route it through my rack and uh, through the pannier in such a way that it gives, uh, gives a nice solid sec secure holding. Um, I was realizing today that I need to make sure that I actually use two sets of, ro two sets of rope one on these top holes, which is how you attach it, which is very nice. <laughs> one of these top holes and one a different rope on these bottom ones. And that's because if the top ones fail, then the bottom ones will catch. And the combination of the top and bottom, when just pedal, when just going, keeps everything nice and exactly where you want it. Um, but you can figure out how to route it yourselves um, once you sort of know that that's an option that works well for it. But um, yeah, and that's all the equipment pretty much, except for, oh, I've got two of these on the bike, and these are 750 milliliters, and one uh, 500 milliliter water bottle. And I've got a basic cycling computer, and uh, that's the, uh, the certainly over there. Just take you over to it for a moment, for a quick little look. Yeah, that's some whiny cats, and just sort of basic racks, surly front rack in the front. And uh, Incredibel, I believe is the brand on this one. Say cycling computer. It's a little dark. If people want to look at things a little bit more, I can always do that later. Brook saddle, which I'm still breaking in. And uh, yeah, that's everything. So I'm just gonna figure out how to post this up because it's my first video. And uh, feel free to ask any questions or provide feedback. Thanks.